This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, and I'm not in this shot because this case is freaking huge. Essentially, she turns on, but does not post, which could mean a number of things. I insist on giving myself a hard time. That's why I'm wearing a Ferrari jersey. So I'm gonna give this my best shot. Hopefully we can end this video on a positive note. Are you ready? Stay with me. NZXT's H7 series cases offer plenty of hardware support and a clean aesthetic sure to complement any build. Choose between white or black variants as well as standard, flow, or elite trims for the right mixture of airflow and beauty. There's plenty of room up top for a fan rad combo larger than just a single 120 or 140, and support for up to a 360mm up front exists for beefy cooling wherever it's needed. You'll also find several fans included depending on the model. If you choose the white one, you'll get white fans, so that's nice. NZXT cases are overall great values as you'll find and you can learn more about them by clicking the link below. Hello there. This is a very tall tower. I don't know why these components are housed in such a large case. It is what it is. This is Fix or Flop. If you're not familiar with what this playlist is about, we attempt to fix viewer systems in and around Orlando, Florida for free. We charge nothing for the service as long as the owners are okay with us taking on their systems for a few days and filming these troubleshooting processes. We can monetize videos here on YouTube, and that's how we make our money. We don't offload any of that cost to the owners who are already gracious enough to drive out and loan us their systems for a few days. Uh, like I said, this one powers on but does not post. I'm hoping it's not a graphics card problem, but it could be a number of things. We've seen a lot here. First things first, I want to attempt to power this on. This will give us a good baseline, knowing where we have to start, uh, what we're working with, the symptoms that uh, were described by the owner also need to line up with what we're seeing here. If they don't, and we were charging this person, then we would have to disclose up front the fact that this might be a more costly uh, repair than maybe they had originally anticipated. Of course, we do this for free, so that part doesn't really matter. But I, I, how, do I, how do I power this on? Oh, there we go. Okay, so LEDs are on. This rig is quite dirty, by the way. Probably take it out front and dust it before we give this back to the owner. But uh, I'm not seeing a signal to our monitor. What's also strange is the fans aren't settling down. That's weird. So I don't, I don't know if the mic can pick it up, but like the fans are at max RPM. Okay, now they settled down. So this would be around the time we would see a post. And the fans kick back on again. So, oh, I don't see a Dr. Debug LED on this board. A lot of folks say try using like a speaker. Well, we have those, we plug them in. And a lot of times these boards don't send out signals to the speaker. It is, there's, there's no codes being sent, so that doesn't really do us much good. I always try uh, off camera if we don't have anything to work with. In this case, I will as well. It should point us in the right direction if it does work. What I want to do first with this one, because it's struggling to even post, is reset the CMOS, which we'll do manually by jumping pins at the bottom of the board. The clear CMOS pins are right here. We're gonna jump these two with our screwdriver with the system off. This will utilize the onboard battery. We'll hold it here for about 10 to 20 seconds. When we release, everything in the BIOS should be reset. I'm not sure if this will fix the issue, but we definitely need to try ahead of time because it only takes a few seconds to perform. We've also seen many instances where this exact symptom has been corrected by clearing the CMOS. It, it sometimes can be that simple, uh, and that's why it's, I, I just think, a common sense quick step to perform earlier in the troubleshooting process rather than later. But still nothing. Actually the exact same symptom. Fans are just ramped up to max RPM, no post. I think what I wanna try rolling out first, it's weird, this fan on this graphics card is, the, is responsible for the, the loud noise. Uh, it's just spinning at max RPM. I'm, I'm tempted to just replace this first and rule it out. It's a, an easier thing to do. And then we'll focus on the CPU and the motherboard. I don't think this is a power supply issue because it looks like the system is trying to post. Most PSU issues just result in the system either flickering on and off or not turning on at all. So let's get this swapped out. And you can see at the very least, she is quite dusty, especially along the back side of the PCB here. Uh, I don't see any alarming physical issues, at least on this side. If this is determined to be the problem, uh, we will take it apart and see if we can find anything that we can fix ourselves here in the office. Also, uh, this just fell out of the PC case. That is disgusting. 
So in place of this 2070 Super, we'll be throwing in our trusty XFX graphics card we've used in many troubleshooting videos. We know this card works, doesn't require cell phone or PCI power or anything like that. So if we don't get a post with this as well, we get the same symptoms, then we'll know that the card is okay. Well, it's not the card. And I suppose that's a good thing. It's probably the most expensive thing in here, uh, or at least the most difficult for me to replace personally. So I'm happy about that. I'm gonna start focusing now on the motherboard and the CPU. I feel like one of these has kicked the can. Actually, I'm totally jumping the gun here. I'm not sure what I was thinking. So we haven't checked memory yet. Uh, system RAM, that's very easy to do. Of course, you just pop in and out the dims. Takes 10 seconds. So we're gonna check that. Uh, also disconnect all of the non-vitals, which I've already done here, uh, and see if that fixes it either. Before we tackle the motherboard and CPU, which are the two more like time labor intensive components to swap, uh, we wanna make sure that we've gotten the easy stuff out of the way. At this point, it still could be anything. It could be a, a bad dim, could be an improperly seated dim, could be a drive that's connected that's just not gelling well with the rest of the rig. Uh, who really knows? So. If, if you're in the dark like I am here and you don't have a postcard or anything to just give you a shortcut straight into what could be the issue, um, then I recommend starting with the easiest stuff to diagnose and moving your way to the most difficult. Uh, and I think that you'll thank yourself in the long run because if it is something easy but you spend time troubleshooting the difficult stuff first, it's just, yeah, it's kind of a waste of time. Ooh, you know what? I just realized something. These dims are in the incorrect slots. So I was uh, testing this uh, with all of the non-vital Wiring disconnected, still no picture, but maybe I've seen it where boards are super picky about where DDR4 modules are installed. I mean, we, these need to be moved into the outer, uh, well, well, one slot each to the right, essentially. And uh, you'll still stay in dual channel. This is technically dual channel as well. It's just not ideal. It's not what the board tells us to do. So we're gonna swap these to those two slots and then we're gonna try one dim a piece if that doesn't work. Uh, and I can also swap with some that I have on hand. I'm not gonna show all of this on screen, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, we'll roll out memory pretty quick here. A few moments later. But of course, nothing I tried works. Let's see what the CPU is under here. Yeah, the paste application is, uh... yeah, we, we, we will definitely replace that. Let's see about what CPU we have under the hood. It is a Ryzen 9. 3900X. Both the socket and the pins on the chip look to be intact. I don't see any debris in the uh, the pin holes and I don't see any bent or outright missing pins here and the thermal paste bleeding over anything like that. So this looks to be at least physically a pretty healthy chip, uh, but because we've already got it removed, I'm gonna replace it with a uh, Ryzen CPU that I know works from my own stash. We'll see if that fixes the problem. Now in the event his CPU is to blame, the best thing I have here for him to replace it with is a Ryzen 7 3700X, which is obviously a small downgrade. I think though that it uh, will still be worth it in the end, right? Because I mean, it's better than nothing. It's better than not having a CPU at all or one that is broken. Uh, and this is still a great CPU for gaming. Uh, so this is the best I can do for him. Again, that, that's assuming that this is even the problem, but we won't know until we throw it in the rig. So let's find out, moment of truth. Which is it, the CPU or the motherboard? I'd be willing to bet that it's probably the motherboard. It's usually what goes wrong before CPU cooks itself. This sounds a lot better already. It sounds like it's already posted. Oh, maybe it is a CPU. I think it's training memory now. So we're gonna give it a minute or two, but the behavior of the fans is a lot different than what we were hearing earlier. You can hear it cycling, and I think that's just a consequence of, of memory training. I do have one of my own dims in the outermost slot, which is a bit unorthodox. It's not really where it should be, but look at that. There we go. So he had a cooked CPU. What exactly is wrong with this? I don't know. I want to run a few more tests. But before that, just wanted to be sure, I've got all of his original hardware back in here, including his two DDR4 modules. Uh, we've got those in the correct slots this time. His 2070 Super's in there again, uh, sticking with the same cooling setup. Everything's all wired up. And there we go. That is a post. So uh, pretty night and day difference. And unfortunately, this little guy here is uh, to blame. Now, I'm not sure if we will be able to figure out what specifically is wrong with this. I've got his CPU in a makeshift test bench here with all components that I know work. And go ahead and power it on. 
I want to see first if his CPU gets hot. I don't have a cooler on here, and I don't recommend you do this, um, particularly for any long amount of time. His chip is getting hot. See, we still don't get that post. I'm going to go ahead and put a cooler on now because it's getting hot quickly. I wasn't sure if it would even warm up. But alas, even after installing a stock cooler, still nothing on screen. And I've waited for about a good five minutes here, which is way longer than it should ever take for a system to post. It's strange because, you know, this system is just exhibiting... Ooh, you know what? Uh, this is also not heating up. That's... Wow. So I think what's happening here, because I've tried multiple DIMM slots with a known working DIMM, uh, I have, you know, we swapped motherboards. We've got a different power supply here. We've, we've done a lot to this rig. And what I can tell you, I just, I just noticed, I just thought to test this because this card gets very hot despite it not having a, a fan. You know, when, when it's running, it gets hot and it's not hot. And what I think that means is that the, during the post process, it's not even getting past the CPU check. It hasn't even enabled the graphics card yet. It might be sipping on just, you know, some, some low key power, but it's not actually pulling any real juice because, well, it's not sending any picture out. It's not trying to either. It's not working because we've, I mean, we're still waiting on the CPU to respond and it's not. So I think if we had a Dr. Debug LED on this board, it would give us a code something like zero, zero just a totally bricked CPU, which is unfortunate, but at least we were able to get his back up and running with a replacement. This thing is super heavy, by the way. I, I had to just like completely manhandle this because uh, it weighs like 60 pounds. Anyway, yeah, uh, bad luck for this 3900X. I am in talks actually with AMD to see if they can inspect these for us, maybe put these in some of their test rigs. I don't know what else they have that they could test these CPUs with, but uh, maybe they can tell us a bit more about why these are dying. The Corsair HS65 surround gaming headset delivers all day comfort and sound with memory foam leather at ear pads, lightweight aluminum reinforced construction, and Dolby Audio 7.1 surround on both Mac and PC. You can even use IQ software with Sound ID to customize audio profiles for unique experiences in game and in chat. As always, you can learn more by clicking the link below. I do want to state for the record that I do not believe this is a. <laughs> I don't know, uh, a generation-wide issue with Ryzen CPUs. I think there are more of them in circulation just because channels like my own were telling folks to buy these because they were phenomenal values compared to Team Blue offerings. I think more of them out there, you know, it's, it's likely that you'll see more of them die as a result of uh, just being more popular. So it might appear that way, but I don't think we have really anything to worry about. I will say that there does appear to be a pattern with Zen 2 CPUs. I, very, very, very tiny sample size. Again, I can't make any definitive statements here. All I can say is that of the chips that have died that are AMD chips, almost all of them have been Zen 2 CPUs. Whether it be a bad memory channel or just outright not booting, like this one here, and I think we've got three or four like outright not booting CPUs from AMD uh, in, the, in the drawer over there. I, you know, they've, they've pretty much all been Zen 2. So it is what it is. There might have been a Zen Plus chip or two in there. But um, I, again, I, I can't make any definitive statement. It's just, uh, it's just interesting, an interesting note. I am trying to communicate with AMD and arrange some sort of, I don't know, collab where they receive all these broken chips, maybe run some pretty ex extensive tests on them. Maybe, you know, I'm sure they have a lot more machinery, I, I know they do, uh, to, to run you know, further tests on these. They can check individual pins on the CPU and see what's going on, see if there's internal issues. And I'm very curious if there's, a, if there's an actual pattern with what is dying in each of these Zen 2 CPUs. That, that's what I'd really like to know. I think that would be very valuable information, not only for us, but also for AMD. For, uh, for future releases. So I'm working on coordinating that. It's, it's you know, AMD is a huge company and I'm a very, very, very tiny fish. So um, we are in talks. I will say that that, that will be uh, something that hopefully we can follow up on in a later video. With that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that the owner's system's back up and running again. And uh, well, another Zen 2 chip bites the dust. If you have a broken CPU or broken cell phone, yeah, if you, definitely if you have a broken CPU, but if, if your system overall just doesn't work, okay, I don't want you 
planting things that you know are broken, I can, I can sniff those out, okay? But uh, if, you, if your system was working fine and all of a sudden doesn't, you suspect especially that it's a hardware related issue, I would like a chance to fix it here on the channel. It might even earn its own fix or flop video. So if you do have a broken system and you live in or around Orlando, Florida, be sure to uh, submit a form. It's linked in this video's description. Uh, all of those entries are greatly appreciated. The worst we can say is no, right? Be sure to follow all the directions though, because that will ensure that we actually consider you for, uh, for a video or, or at least for attempting to fix the rig. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet, get subscribed. I'd appreciate that. Consider giving this one a thumbs up and commenting down below. And I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.